Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Amir Razizad, and today I'll be presenting a project titled The Effect of Overdose Education and Naloxone Distribution, an Umbrella Review of Systematic Reviews. Uh, as many of you may already know, opioid misuse has become a major public health crisis in recent years. In North America, for example, the incidence of overdose deaths has risen fivefold over the past two decades. And presently, opioids are the leading cause of injury-related death, resulting in about 60,000 deaths annually. Uh, several prevention strategies have been implemented, including overdose education and naloxone distribution. And although several public health organizations have recommended increasing access to naloxone distribution, these recommendations have been primarily based on a precautionary principle, since evidence supporting the effectiveness of naloxone distribution remains unclear, due largely to self-reported data and research which has been primarily observational. Also, several systematic reviews have been published on the effectiveness of overdose education and naloxone distribution programs, but they have focused on different outcomes, yielding a generally very fragmented literature in the field. Uh, as a result, the objective of this present study was to conduct a meta-knowledge synthesis to provide a comprehensive overview on the effect of, pardon me, on the effect and feasibility of overdose education and naloxone distribution programs. In order to comprehensively evaluate overdose education and naloxone distribution programs, we conducted a systematic review of systematic reviews, which can be referred to as an umbrella review. And as you can see in this figure, umbrella reviews are currently the highest level of secondary research as they synthesize systematic reviews as the analytical unit. And the advantage of this methodology is that it allows researchers to comprehensively evaluate high level evidence associated with an entire topic. And this facilitates decision maker access to evidence that's needed to improve evidence based policy practices. After conducting a systematic search, which uh, search seven pardon me, five databases, we identified six eligible systematic reviews for our umbrella review. We then evaluated the validity of the reported outcomes using a previously modified version of the Royal College of General Practitioners Clinical Guidelines and a critical appraisal tool for systematic reviews known as AMSTAR, which you can see on the left-hand side. And evidence was classified as strong, moderate, limited slash contradictory, or inconclusive based on the quality of the eligible reviews as well as their primary studies. Now, I'll be discussing the key findings associated with our umbrella review. As I previously mentioned, we identified six systematic reviews, which included 87 unique primary studies. Five reviews evaluated program effectiveness, and one review evaluated different modes of naloxone administration and the need for hospital transport after overdose rescue. So improvement in knowledge regarding opioid-related overdose risk factors, symptoms, and response strategies was the only domain that received our highest confidence rating. Despite variation in context, curriculum, and participants, primary studies consistently found that overdose education was effective. We also found that overdose education and naloxone distribution programs generally produced beneficial outcomes across all the outcome domains that we considered. For instance, on the uh, pardon me, for instance, you can see that this included improvements in attitude about naloxone, improved overdose response behaviors, safe and effective overdose rescue by laypersons, good likelihood of good likelihood of layperson overdose response, lower rates of adverse events after overdose reversal, and highly acceptable cost effectiveness. We also found causal evidence that overdose education and naloxone distribution programs produce population level reductions in opioid related overdose mortality. And this was primarily supported by one quasi experimental study that found a dose response relationship between community program enrollment and opioid related mortality. However, as you can see, our ratings for the strength of evidence were often limited or moderate, as you can see in the far right column of these tables. In terms of challenges, one of the major ones in synthesizing evidence with overdose education and naloxone distribution programs is the heterogeneity of the programs that exist across North America. They typically vary widely in their setting, participants, intervention design, and importantly, the volume of naloxone that they actually distribute in the communities that they serve. It's likely that this varied implementation generates differential effects, and better understanding the determinants and consequences of this heterogeneity can help guide the development of more effective overdose prevention strategies. In conclusion, our umbrella review provides a broad-based conceptual scheme on the effect and feasibility of overdose education and naloxone distribution, demonstrating that injection drug users and the public can make a meaningful contribution to the opioid epidemic. As a result, we believe that overdose education and naloxone distribution programs should be widely implemented in communities that are highly affected by illicit drug supplies containing fentanyl. 
And the evolution of the opioid crisis also serves, the, serves to highlight the need for a multifaceted approach that removes barriers to naloxone in addition to addressing the structural factors such as economic inequity that contribute to opioid use disorder and opioid related harm. I'd like to take the last moments of this presentation to thank everyone who is involved, as well as the Canadian Institutes of Health Research for funding this research. Thank you very much.